Are there Sapieni Morales in Chicago? Let's find out. Okay, so last night I was looking up snail information like I do sometimes, and I figured out that Sapieni Morales could be located very close to my house. So I actually missed this information. I guess I don't look it up that often um, because the first reported sighting of a Sapieni Morales in this park by my house was in April. Didn't know about it until right now, which is what the first week of September. And I figured, you know, there's only one report that's kind of iffy. I mean, you know, what if that was just one snail that was somehow on a plant or something that someone released or they dumped their pets and it was just one single snail? You know, maybe they aren't there. But there was a second report made, which was, I think, around the second week of August. So then I thought, okay, well, that's at least two reports of Sapieni Morales being inside of this forest preserve. It's 40 minutes away from my house. Might as well go check it out today. You know, it's a rainy day. Of course, you know, me being super excited about Sapieni Morales possibly being in my own state this time. I want to go check it out. All right, so this seems like we've arrived at the place we're supposed to be at. It's some kind of forest preserve park type of thing. So, since the snail hunt is gonna be in South Chicago, I figured this was an appropriate t-shirt to wear for the occasion. All right, so we are off the trail here. I kind of looked at the map, and this seems like we're in the area where the sepia would be. And of course, here, we have a shell. It's empty. And I just saw another one over there. So if there's anything, they should be in this field. Maybe we'll check by the train track. Sometimes trains are responsible for introducing species. Uh, but this is a good sign. Also some more interesting items around here, but kind of what I would expect to find in South Chicago. Um, also, I should learn to record things when I see them, uh, but there's a number of shells around here and it looks like sepia is not the only thing. I thought maybe this was another foreign species, but with the banding on that, this is just Anguispira, probably Anguispira alternata. It's so nothing too super interesting, so I guess I'll just keep sweeping this whole area, see if we can find anything that's still alive. Well, it seems like this is kind of the end of the trail now. And there were no more live sepia anywhere. No shells to signal that there were any in this area to begin with. So I think what I'll do is, well, go back. I don't really have a choice to go back unless I can jump across that creek there. Uh, but... Being unfamiliar with this preserve, I think there might be another trail somewhere in this area, but um, with the reported Sapia findings, they were all in the area I just crossed. So if anything, I'm probably just gonna go back there, uh, keep digging around, see if I can find anything um, somewhere in the shrubs over there. All right, so I should have listened to my logic in the first place instead of going stumbling around elsewhere um gonna have to learn to not be stupid sometime uh but here we have sapieni morales and it's alive uh very small but hey it's a living sapia so there's a sign that there are more in the area so here we have a small leaf let me focus this hopefully uh i'll probably just have to reshoot this actually so as you can see here, very young, Sepia nemoralis on this leaf. So we're, you know, in that shrub land. So I guess what we'll do is just keep looking around the shrubs here. Hopefully not get full of ticks. You know, knowing me, I didn't bring bug spray or anything. Uh, but this is a good sign. All right, awesome, check it out. Here we have a sub-adult. Sapia Morales. Finally, one that's alive. So yeah, uh, I think that's the best plan right now is just to keep checking all this shrubland 
to see if we can find more adults because I mean here we have a clear signal that there is a small but still existent living population of sapia in this area all right so here we have another you know juvenile but relatively large sapia i mean at least in terms of what we've been finding so this little island of trees in this prairie is well it seems like that's the only place where there are any sapia nemoralis at all uh, if we leave the premises, like we saw earlier, there's just the shells in the open, rocky terrain. If we went down there where that river started, there was no more. So whatever introduction happened, if it was in this area or they migrated towards this area, this kind of island, what I call island because it's, you know, islands of trees, uh, seems to be the only place where these Sapia nemoralis are located at. So we have another sub-adult, Sapiani Morales, right there. And actually right next to that one, there is another one. So I might just start kind of scrubbing around in this particular micro area to see if there is more. So this is an exciting find. Let's hope it's alive. Yep, there is a snail in there. So here we have the biggest, most yellow, Sapiani Morales, I found. Let's put him back, I don't know, on top of this thing, why not? And then there is a juvenile down in the grasses here. Relatively, you know, decent size on this guy too. Well, whatever, you know, there are the pair that I just found. All right, so same area. Here we have some more sepia. This one's interesting. You can see it has a bit of a reddish pink kind of tip to that shell in contrast with that other yellow one. Of course, another sepia Let's see if it's alive. And there is a slime trail, so why wouldn't it be? Uh, yeah, another adult. Um, so, I mean, as you can see, I'm kind of just uh, going through this brush here. Kind of made a good decision to wear these long pants. It wasn't exactly something I wanted to do today because it's 65 degrees, so I'm really sweating. But, at least I don't have as much stuff scratching my legs and hopefully it'll keep the ticks away. But I feel like after rummaging around through all this stuff, I'm probably gonna have to do a tick check once I get home. So here we have more of that kind of reddish color form. So there is a little bit of diversity of them inside of this island, but pretty much all just the multi-banded form. So I think that's going to be me calling it a day for today. There doesn't seem to be anything else outside of that little uh, pocket island. Uh, but make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. I'll be making more videos about plants, about snails. Uh, I have a bunch of footage, actually 80 minutes of footage, from Florida because I just went to see the tree snails. Although, you know, the problem I was having, the problem I was having is that um, my phone ran out of space. So trying to put that onto Movie Maker wasn't working. Uh, the airdrop function with my MacBook wasn't working for whatever reason. So I just have all these files and having trouble editing them. That's why I'm recording this on this Canon PowerShot old style because my iPhone has become useless. Might need to get that iPhone 10 with a bunch of storage capacity on it. So, you know, that's my preferred method of recording videos. Uh, but yeah, I do have stuff I'm trying to edit and upload. Hopefully all that stuff will be on my YouTube channel soon. So hit that subscribe button down below, hit that bell icon. You'll be notified when I make that new video, but I think uh, we're gonna call that a day. Very fun Sapiani Morales trip in this hidden little pocket nobody knows about.